the college and on the architects who won the Clyde Carpenter Adaptive Reuse Award for this project here at the Laundry Building. Pause for applause. There we go. So in addition to the detour, we also have some other great events coming up at the Bluegrass Trust. Um, we have our Hopemont Lecture featuring Brent Legs. Uh, that is going to be on October 12th. Uh, following that, we are also going to be having our Hopemont Lecture Preservation Workshop. That's going to be the morning of October the 13th. And then if you want to get your uh, preservation and Halloween spirit started early, also on October the 13th, which is Friday the 13th, at 1.30, we are going to do a cemetery cleanup of African uh, Cemetery Number 2 here in Lexington. Uh, to find out more information about that, you can go on our website, or you can ask any of our Bluegrass Trust volunteers, those are the people with name tags on, or staff, those are the people also with name tags on, and they can direct you to that. Uh, without further ado, though, I would like to turn it over to Chad, who's going to graciously tell us about the building and then lead us through. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. <clears throat> uh, I'm Chad Gallus with uh, Omni Architects, um, principal and partner there, and I had the, the privilege of working on this project uh, during the design and, and the construction of it. Um, and so uh, not available to be here are the two kind of lead designers from our office, uh, Michael Jacobs, I'm sure some of you guys know, uh, former president of Omni, and Jeff Bennett, um, and a former architect in our office that now actually works for BCTC uh, after this project. So they loved working with Jeff so much they hired him away. So um, that's a, a kind of added story to, to, to this building. But a little bit of background about the project. I'll try to keep it kind of brief so we can just really go enjoy the space and kind of ask questions as they come up. But um, the building was originally constructed in 1906 uh, as a part of Eastern State Hospital. Um, and early in the kind of 2000s, I believe, era, there was a transition and a swap between BCTC and Eastern State Hospital for this property so that BCTC could start to develop this campus. And that swap, um, some of the kind of negotiating was that this building and the uh, administration building, which is around uh, the science building there, would be integrated into campus planning and, and utilized. That was kind of part of the negotiation of that land swap uh, that took place. Um, and so very early on when we got this project, which is about student service and uh, student support and onboarding, we kind of had a very set starting point, which was our project needs to incorporate this facility. So one of the first things that we did was meet with Craig Potts, get an understanding of, of how he would like us to, to best understand what he wanted out of, out of the rehabilitation of, of this building. Um, and then we met with BCTC to better understand what their needs would be, and then try to figure out a plan for how we can make a building support their student intake services and best utilize this facility uh, in, a, in a good and honest manner, kind of true to the uh, the negotiation. So that was a little bit of a challenge. You know, student intake services are inherently kind of office driven functions. And so the program of this building required a lot of smaller spaces um, and it required more space than what this building could provide. So we had to, from the very beginning, anticipate an addition and how can we best design the addition to bring the character of this building as far forward and really be the star of the design and have the new building really um, contextually relate but not overdo or try to replicate such a, a, a fantastic facility. And so a lot of the new design exterior context is pulled from this existing building. And so specifically brick color, right? So we wanted to be very knowledgeable of the color and so the addition that's kind of on that side of the cross um, is very significant of that brick color we wanted to pay homage to the slate siding which is original and so the two-tone metal panel is a kind of contextual play on that while really allowing the new building to be of its time and celebrate this building which is of its time so internally um, that the, the program of this building, we really worked to ensure that this main entry was the starting point for that student intake. This was the original door to the facility. And so maintaining that main entrance was a key component to the design of the process. So really we overlaid all of the seat, and this is in the diagram. I don't know if everyone got a pamphlet, but there's a plan in there that really helps to kind of see 
the intake process, that process led the design. So the, the facility, not only this building and the addition, are all about what process the student needs to take when they're coming here for their first day or for their intake process. So it's very much about a flow through the building and then out the addition. And so our challenge really with this was to cherish this building, design a new building that was um, aware of the contextual relationship and maximize our potential for what this is. So when we walk inside, hopefully you feel that we were successful in trying to get office function program into a space that really, really embraced the existing structure, the existing clear story, the existing masonry walls, which are still exposed on the inside and really celebrate the kind of bones of, of this building and bring it back to life. Any specific questions before we kind of get in and get to see it? I think the other thing that we'll note as we walk through is there's what's considered the hyphen, which is a very low, small connector that allows this building form to have an identity of its own and the addition to have an identity of its own with that small connector, which is kind of considered the hyphen. So that the, the length of that hyphen is 30 feet, which is a kind of code requirement and kind of critical to getting the approval through all of the regulations and such. And the intent of that is really to break the two buildings so that they can really have their own identity that can be cherished and embraced. We have one open space, which is really about providing a space for BCTC to utilize as they see fit and as they need to. So it's a very multi-use space kind of right in here at the kind of middle of this cross that really embraces, in my opinion, the, the, the best part of this building and this facility. Yeah. Watch your step. It was vacant for the longest time, but originally it was it was the laundry facility for the hospital. Um, so there was a lot of existing infrastructure that was the laundry process that we had to kind of work through. And uh, there were the floors were had you know, linear drink strains all over to help facilitate that washing process. BC, BC train land and coal train? Excuse me. Because the hospital moved out of coal train, didn't it? It was a UK BCPC Eastern State it Hospital was swamp. So UK had has the ideal that BCTC eventually vacates the UK proper space. Yeah. And so this is part of moving some of those facilities and those student intake functions that were at UK campus over to this kind of new campus. Of that DCTC is trying to make. So that was the third part in that. that was. Um, a question that came in uh, while we were walking in is this was used as the laundry facility. So that's why that laundry building um, is, is kind of connected to the facility. So when we were doing the design, there were no interior walls. There was one big open space. The drywall that we see here that's now painted white was not there. There's an image uh, in, in the Bullets and it kind of gives you an idea of just the state of kind of repair that was necessary when we were here. Um, and so, you know, our original design was really about very much overly documenting all of the existing conditions so that they could be repaired so that this building could be 
it. So we detailed every single brick that needed tuck pointed, every spot in the concrete that needed to be patched or infilled. There were a lot of linear trench drains because of that laundry process that was taking place. Um, several of the win windows were damaged, the glass was broken out of them. Um, and so a part of our, you know, our, our ask and our goal was to make this a comfortable building that is very high energy performing as it could be. And so we had the decision to make of what do we do with the exterior masonry wall? Um, they're 100 years old, 110 years old, triple white masonry. Some of the, the school of thought is that you insulate on the inside and provide some a space and air gaps so that the walls can continue to breathe. We really wanted to embrace the performance and or the aesthetic of them because it really brings that warmth and that character through to all the spaces. And so we were concerned by putting insulation and air barrier that it would actually hurt the wall that had actually held very well over about a hundred year span. So we chose to, in essence, tuck point the brick and leave it exposed and let it breathe the way it has for 110 years and bring it into the kind of character of the interior space. Same with, so we added insulation above, so that insulation is, is what helps to really increase the performance of the building. We had window replacements, but the paint choice and the choice to leave all of these ceilings open was about exposing this amazing structure everywhere. And so, you know, you can see to get utilities to support today's kind of comfort, it takes a lot of infrastructure. And so, you know, we chose to expose it embrace that that's necessary really so that we can see up through the clear story as far as we can and express that structure. This um, higher part, was that intended to let heat out in the summer, you know, why, why it was kind of... It is natural generation, uh, but it's also about daylight. It's a way to allow, you know, when, when these lights are off, it's about halfway back to the normal artificial light is still coming up. This space is incredibly worth it. So even more about daylight was that I keep up. When all the lights were on and there was no power on, we were inside and we didn't need flashlights. That's what I found in this space. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe that that was a But considering the laundry facility, you know, I guess they used the window to prop them open a bit so that the that heat that was generating was using the very heat in our presence. So like kind of those connections that are, you know, steel bolted connections and all of those things, that, that was all kind of here. We had to clean them up. Yeah. We had to really strip the old paint off, remove the rust, repair and remediate if necessary. So the, the exterior walls are low barrier. So in some conditions we had to brace those exterior walls because they are holding up the structure. It's interesting point. Mm -hmm. And that was that was all here. Right, so this detail of the curl brick at the window openings was here. And that was another one of the, the things that led to our decision to not cover it up. Because it's very you don't see this yeah, it's it's like it. of, of detail around the window. So the whole building's structure is on a five and triple piece where not anything else. Okay. So the, all of those are resting on this. So you can see we infilled the gap because this wall is actually really thick. Uh -huh. That seal is going over to this exterior. Are there any uh, original records from the hospital that uh, helps you to understand the original construction here? Um, there was some. I know that, that Jeff and Michael dug into that as much as they could. And what we brought our structural engineer over that, and they kind of evaluated the structure with us. Mr. Potts provided some information on the facility to us in our multiple conversations. So, yes, I believe there was some, but I don't know to what extent. You know, I think because of the transfer, I don't know how much piece of this got of that documentation uh, just to forward to us. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't answer that fully, but I know that we had some understanding based on our own observation and some documentation. Just out of curiosity, do you have to remember? Oh. The, 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 the 
project cost at five million means that that's everything in the system as well. That's the addition as well. That's furniture. That's our fees. That's the whole thing was there. So usually it's like an 80 20 split in terms of soft costs, which cover furniture, IT, and such. And right. construction is about 80% of that budget. So I think we bid at like the construction, so the renovation of this and the addition, just over $4 million, I think. How long did it take? Selection is how the city of Kirkland does it. So we have to interview for the project to submit. Um, that was in early 18 um, and completed in uh, 2018. It was early 2018. So part of the, the struggles with the construction was we were building the development. Right? And so that had a major impact on the construction process. Material availability, contra contractor availability, all of those challenges. There's not much clearance in that space. I'll just, I'll just put it that way. So, you know, we have BCTC had to be very, their maintenance staff had to be very kind of understanding that there are challenges here that we can't give you the type of space that you would like to put these, these things in just because of what was available. That's an office suite. So, all of those are kind of small intermittent offices. Again, this was kind of a, a large, central, flexible space. We continue through that corridor with more office suites. Eventually, we'll, we'll pass through that hyphen, and then the addition is kind of on the other side. What is this room? Yeah, this is kind of a multifunctional conference space. So um, they have all sorts of things happening. Class, presentations, the regular community. The hyphen. These are all the same main school stepped on all three of my laptops. And yet you graduated. Well, because you're the libraries. <laughs>
know the site line. It's a cross here with okay. something that isn't Tom Gunnell or Peyton. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> uh, how's your week going? All right. Good. My lady friend and I just came back from taking her to her family for her 80th birthday. Oh, excuse me.